Welcome to the Arc Fight Battery, your power source for all things Warcraft Rumble related. In today's video, we're going to be looking at sieges and specifically the first boss. Um, I was going to do all three in the same video, but it's going to be a really long video if we do that. So I'm going to try to release three videos pretty quickly here, uh, potentially in the next three days, to cover all three of the siege levels. But let's go ahead and get right into it. So the first boss, well, I guess all the bosses aren't transitioning right now so each boss actually has a mechanic that happens at a certain percentage of health i believe it's 66 percent and 33 percent but they're not really happening you can kind of fish for them which you'll see in the video but generally they don't happen however we did get it to trigger a couple of times so the first boss his mechanic is at 66 percent health he will shield charge forward and take back both of the towers there i believe he also kills things in his path too and he summons some more Stormwind Guards to fight you off. And you just have to retake it and reclaim it. And then I believe at 33% health, he does this blue buff. I believe it just increases the damage that the Stormwind Guards do. But it's not too difficult to deal with. It can kind of feel chaotic. But with the right units, I think it'll be a piece of cake. So, what are the right units? Well, even though the boss has mechanics... Probably the main mechanic of the fight is that there are all these barracks around that you have to go in between, and each one houses a couple of Stormwind Guards that will shoot a ranged attack at your units, and it can kind of be obnoxious, because once you kill them, they're gone for a while, but then they start spawning again. So, they don't have a lot of health, but they do do some decent damage, and you have to get pretty close to kill them. Unless you use something like Plague Farmer. This unit, with its Splashing Pumpkins talent, increasing the range, is really good for this map. It's two gold, it takes out every single one of the Stormwind Guards behind the barracks. It is awesome. It's also awesome because this talent makes it to where he has a longer range than Arrow Towers, which all of the towers on this map are. So he will happily take towers by himself, he will kill Stormwind Guards by himself, he is an absolute MVP. But... Don't worry if you don't have this. If you don't have this, you can always just use Meat Wagon. I did not use this just because I kind of already know it's good. We've done on Nexia, we've seen it there, we know that it outranges everything. It's great. Didn't need to test it here. But if you don't have the Plague Farmer and that talent, you can use the Meat Wagon with the Filet Trebuchet talent. Um, hopefully you have one of those. If you don't, something else you can do is play a ranged unit like Pyromancer. We're running this in the deck. Um, Super good for this encounter too. You just need a uh, unbound tank or just a tank to walk in front of her so that she doesn't get sniped by the Stormwind Guards. If you don't have a tank in front of her, she probably will die. But that's okay. We have cheap tanks here. Um, other than that, there's not really a huge recommendation on units. I think they all do physical damage, so maybe something armored. The boss also plays things like Harpies and uh, Huntress, so... Definitely want some armor units here. You could probably get away with running, like, Footmen. Or maybe... I don't know, something really tanky, like maybe Abomination or uh, Molten Giant. But there are a decent number of smaller units as well. So, something like a Witch Doctor might be helpful. I'd say smaller units. They're all Stormwind Guards, and they come out quite frequently. But they don't have as much health as regular Footmen. Um, yeah, super fun boss very excited to showcase it definitely need something to attack over the walls flame waker is also pretty good um, to get to the storm guards behind the barracks but the leader choice here isn't too important there's some really cool combos you can do you can do emperor thorson with murkai to give all your perlocks the uh, fiery weapon enchant you can do things like dracosath and jaina that will help you uh, really tear through bosses pretty quickly uh, you could stack Tyrians, do double Tyrians. There's just all sorts of stuff you can do. Cairn and Sylvanas for their global buffs. It's just so much fun so far. But in this fight specifically, I think the minis are really what shine here. So make sure you have something that has a long range. Like, once again, Play Farmer, Meat Wagon, something like that. Having a spell in your deck is good to transition the boss when you need to. Maybe not right now because you don't always get the transition mechanics but in the future when you are progressing through the fight and you need to transition at a certain point when you're not super far behind you can get the boss low or close to that checkpoint and then use a spell to 
push him over that threshold. So, definitely have a spell in your deck as well. Other than that, I don't think there's too many requirements. Grab a tank, grab an unbound unit because they're always useful. Grab some sort of flying DPS and some range units to take out the uh, Stormwind Guards behind the barracks. And then a spell. So, let's go ahead and look at the actual fight. You'll notice in this video that I'm kind of just fishing to get the transitions and the mechanics so that I, I can showcase them. So we're not really playing optimally, but it's good enough to showcase the fight. So let's get into it. All right, so here we have the first boss of Stormwind. You can see all the footmen and uh, sitting behind their walls, their barracks. Uh, Arthur and I are just doing this real quick. Um, he's playing Karen, I'm playing Savas. I don't think this is an optimal leader combination for this, but it's just something we wanted to test out. I've chosen to run Pyromancer because it's great at getting rid of some of the clusters of units that will eventually appear on the map once the boss gets lower health. Uh, and you'll be able to see that here in just a little bit. Um, here's the uh, Plague Farmer. You can see he outranges the Stormwind Guard pretty handily there. He's getting ready to go and do it again on this left side. Super valuable unit for two gold. This guy is awesome in this encounter. Uh, I think even if he's under leveled, you'll probably still want to run him as he outranges both the Stormwind Guards and he outranges the towers. So you'll get to see that here in just a moment. Um, Savas isn't the worst pick just because Black Arrow is really good. It may be tempting to run the Fury Talent just to give your uh, allies uh, Fury on their units as well. But it's not needed. Black Arrow is so much better than that talent. Um, so we're going to play a Pyromancer here, which will almost immediately get shot down. But thankfully, we have the triple damage on the first cast talent. So she ends up killing them in one hit and saves herself, which is really good. And she's able to support the right. Now, we're going to go pretty slow on the boss's health here. Um, just trying to make sure we transition properly. It seems like if you do too much damage to the boss in one go then um, he doesn't transition at all. But it's really buggy. Honestly, sometimes it transitions, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it transitions twice, and you get the mechanic multiple times. And it's uh, it's fun, to say the least. So right now, we're just kind of spending unbound units on him to make sure we just barely push him over that threshold, and we can see what the mechanics are. Um, so... Probably going to execute the base there, just because we want we don't want to push him too far past the point. We want to make sure that we actually see the transition. So it looks like he's getting ready to transition, though I think we just barely don't make it. Yeah. Yeah, it looks to be the case. But we'll cycle back around to another quill bore, and we'll get there. There's a lot of gold veins on this chest, though, so you really want to make sure that you are taking advantage of those. And they're really close, too. So... Definitely coordinate with your partner and make sure that you know which one you should be getting and which one they should be getting so you don't drop kobolds in the same spot. we got more footmen coming around. It's not too bad. Once again, play farmer is fantastic against them. Also meat wagon if you don't have play farmer. I believe this quill war should push him past. Yep, so here's his transition point, which he should transition right away, but it's bugged. Um, so this is transitioning a little late, which is totally fine. Um, we actually don't think it's worked here, but then you'll see here in just a moment. Yep, he charges forward, takes back both of the towers, and we have to take them back. Which is a pretty fun mechanic. I don't think he's supposed to do it more than once. I could be wrong, but it just feels like... Um, I don't know why he would charge a second time after he um, takes the towers. Uh, he's buffing his guards and summoning more. So we've got this giant line of footmen getting ready to be here. Um, all with buffed weapons. I, I think that just makes him do more damage. But as long as you have some decent AoE in your team. So like Pyromancer, Plague Farmer, Cairn's really good, Savant's is really good. Um, yeah, shouldn't be an issue. Shouldn't be an issue at all. Um, so we'll try and push it again here. I'm going to fast forward just a little bit because all we're doing is taking this tower again and then pushing back up to the boss. So we'll fast forward just a touch. 
just a touch more. So we've gotten the towers back. Um, well, we're getting ready to take this one back. Go just a little higher. Got the middle tower back. I think we are getting ready to try and take the right tower and probably try and transition the boss with a small push. We don't want to push too much. Once again, we don't want to uh, push it so much that it doesn't transition. We're really looking for that transition here. Yep, and there he goes, taking his towers again, even though he shouldn't need to. I wonder if that is the encounter bugging or if he will end up doing that multiple times. But something tells me that it's probably just a bug. Fast forward just a couple more seconds. Here we go. We're almost getting ready to push him. We're going to execute him here and see what happens. And I believe he does transition. And he starts buffing everything on the map with this blue aura. It's hard to see. Um, and it doesn't always happen. But let's look at it real quick. Um, they have glowing weapons, which they had before, but I believe he emits this little blue aura that you need to be looking at him to see that buffs their damage. Could be wrong. Could maybe not be getting the third transition, but it looks like that's what it is, as well as summoning a bunch of Stormwind Guards. Um, I think we're losing here. Uh, we were debating on whether we wanted to try and go again, or if this was what we thought was the transition. But I think we end up just losing here in just a moment. But yeah, super fun fight. Lots of footmen. They don't have very much help, especially if you have AoE on your team. Once again, Plague Farmer, Meat Wagon, Pyromancer. Um, I guess leaders are important. Like, you could play Sylvanas and Cairn. They both do good AoE. But it's not needed. Just, just have some decent minis. So, yep. This guy is really fun, and you get... 200 Valor for beating him, so your first diamond slot. There you have it, so there's what the first boss looks like. Once again, I was going to do more than one boss in this video, but I think it'll be too long if we do that. Look forward to the next two bosses as well, and if you are wondering um, about raids, I'm going to be live streaming them the day they release, from the moment they release, and hopefully until they are dead. And Ragnaros is on the floor, and we have the mini going to be live streaming that on Twitch and YouTube, so make sure to check that out. Uh, it should be a really fun time. So thank you guys so much for watching as always, and until next time, bye.